Hello, and welcome back to another Bible story with mom. Today, my mom will come and read us a story all about Joseph, the son of Jacob, and how he is sold as a slave to Egypt, and how things in his life seem to just keep getting worse. Are you ready to find out what happens in this story? Well, then, let's begin. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to another story time. I'm so excited that you have joined me today for another story. Can you remember what our last story was? Let's recap. So last time, we learned about Jacob, that he left Laban secretly. And so when Laban heard that he was gone, Laban pursued after him. And Laban was very upset. But they came to an agreement. Jacob fought with an angel of God. And the angel touched his hip and it went out of joint. The angel blessed him. And afterwards, Jacob was brave enough to face his brother Esau. His brother Esau forgave him and gave him a big hug. Wow, that was a beautiful story. Now, let's see what our story will be for today. I have a clue for you. The clue is, it's a boy and he got a special gift and the gift had many colors. Do you know who the story is about? Okay, let's find out. Today's story is Joseph and his brothers. Let's turn the pages and find out more about this story. God told Jacob to leave Shechem and to go up to Bethel and dwell there and make there an altar unto him. So Bethel is where Jacob spoke to God when he ran away from Esau, his brother. Remember where he had that dream with the ladder? And Jacob had changed the name of this place from Luz to Bethel? Jacob and all the people that were with him came to Bethel, and they built there an altar and called the place El Bethel. While Jacob journeyed from Bethel to the land of his father, Rachel gave birth to a son. Ah, so Rachel was pregnant, and as they journeyed, she gave birth. But she had a hard labor, and she died. Oh, no, that's so sad. So we see that Rachel was pregnant. Wow. Remember, she only had one son. And his name was Joseph. And now God has blessed her again and given unto her another son. But she had such hard labor, she died. Oh, dear. Jacob named the baby Benjamin. Then continued his journey and came unto Isaac, his father, Unto Mamre, which is in Hebron. When Isaac was a hundred and eighty years old, he died. Oh dear, that's so sad. Esau and Jacob, they buried him. I'm happy that Jacob got to see his father before he died. And Isaac must have been so happy to see him after all these years. Remember, 
He stayed with Laban for 20 years and it took him some time before he got to the land of his father. So it's over 20 years since they've seen each other. And now he and his brother has made peace. So his father must have been happy to see them together. Let's keep reading and find out more. So it took Jacob some time to get to where his father lived. Let's take a look at this map to see Jacob's journey. So after Jacob told Esau to go on before him, he journeyed to Shechem. Then he went to Bethel and made an altar to God. While continuing on his journey, Rachel died. He continued on his journey and reached Hebron, where his father lived. Home at last. Wow. Okay, let's keep going and find out more. Esau took his wives and his sons, his daughters, and all that he had in the land of Canaan and went to live in Mount Seir in Edom. I wonder why he did that. Let's find out. For their riches were too much for them to dwell together, and they had too many cattle to live together in the same land. Wow! So they were both very rich. They had lots of servants and lots of cattle, lots of sheep and camel and goat. God was blessing them, right? And so they had too many animals and their families were too big to stay together on the same land. So Esau decided to move to a different land, which is called Edom. Let's find out more. But Jacob stayed in the land where his father had lived with his family. And his family is very big. It includes 12 sons. Let us see if we can remember the names of his sons. Let's begin. Reuben. Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin. Good job. All right, let's keep going and find out what happens next in the story. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flocks with his brothers. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So, Joseph was working in the field with his brothers. But he would tell his father all the bad things that his brothers would do. Maybe they didn't pay attention to the cattle. Maybe they wandered away or maybe they were playing. Why they should be watching the flocks, right? So he would tell his dad all the bad things that his brothers would do. And if you have a brother or a sister, then you would understand because sometimes your brother or your sister would tell your parents if you did something bad, right? Maybe they broke something or maybe they hit you or maybe they were fighting, right? Okay, let's keep reading and find out what happened next. Now Israel, and we remember that Jacob is also called 
Israel. Remember, when the angel of God blessed him, he said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, right? So if we hear the name Israel, we can remember that it's Jacob. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Oh, no, that's not good. Parents are not supposed to have favorites, right? It will cause problem. Someone will get jealous, right? Let's keep going. And he made him a coat of many colors. Uh-oh. That's not good. He loves Joseph. He's his favorite. But he's also given him a special coat. How do you think his brothers will feel? Oh, dear. Let's find out more. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him. Oh, dear. That's not good and could not speak peaceably unto him. So they were mean to him because they were jealous because their dad loved him more and gave him special treatment. He gave him special things, right? Oh, dear. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brothers. And they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaves arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheave. That means their sheaves bowed to Joseph's sheave. And his brethren said unto him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. So, so here the brothers are saying, are you going to rule over us and have power? Wow. So this dream did not make them happy because it is telling them that they will have to bow down to Joseph. Joseph will have power and authority, but Joseph was not the oldest. He was the 11th child and Reuben was the oldest. So Reuben would have been the leader, right? Not Joseph. Let's read on and find out more. And he dreamed yet another dream. Wow. And told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Oh, dear. I don't think his brothers are going to be happy about this dream either. What do you think? And he told it to his father and to his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren and his brothers envied him. But his father observed the saying. So in this dream, he saw the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. So the sun and the moon would represent his mom and dad, his parents, right? 
and the stars would represent his brothers and they were not happy about this dream right so his father rebuked him his father said will your mother and i bow ourselves to thee but his father thought about the dream he considered what could this dream really mean all right let's keep going and find out more and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in shechem do you remember shechem jacob had lived in shechem before he continued his journey to his father's land right and israel said unto joseph do not thy brethren feed the flocks in shechem and he said to him go i pray thee see whether it be well with thy brothers and well with the flocks so Jacob wanted Joseph to go and to check on his brothers and the flocks and to see if they're okay because they went all the way to Shechem and that's a far journey. So he probably didn't hear from them in a few days, but he wanted to make sure that they were okay. So Joseph had to go and check on them and then come back. Let's keep reading and find out more. When Joseph got to Shechem, a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. Oh, dear. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? So Joseph did not see his brothers anywhere in the field, and he was searching and searching until a man saw him and asked, What are you looking for? And he said, I seek my brothers. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. So Joseph was not sure where his brothers were. So he is asking this man if he knows where they are. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. Ah, so they're not where they're supposed to be. They decided to go someplace else. <laughs> Let's see if Joseph will go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Oh. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Oh, Dear, this is not good. They're planning to kill Joseph. Uh-oh. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. Uh-oh, this is not good. And we will say, some evil beast hath devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. So, because his brothers are jealous of him, they decided to kill him. And throwing him in a pit. Yay. And then tell his father that some beast had eaten him. Oh dear, that's not good. It's never good to hurt someone, right? And then they were planning to tell a lie. Uh-oh. Let's find out more. And Reuben heard it and said, Let us not kill him. Shed no blood 
but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rescue him out of their hands to deliver him to his father. Ah, so Reuben heard the plan. Reuben is the oldest, but he did not agree with what his brothers were planning. And so he told his brothers, let us not hurt him, but throw him in the spit because Reuben had planned to come back and take him out of the pit when they were not looking. Oh, that's really nice, isn't it? All right, let's keep going and find out more. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph of his coat of many colors and they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in the pit. Oh, that's good. So they took Reuben's advice. They didn't kill him. They threw him in the pit. All right, let's keep going. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. So these Ishmaelites were going to Egypt to probably sell or trade the things that they had. Hmm. I think they have another idea of what they should do with the Joseph. Let's find out. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay your brother? and conceal his blood. Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. Oh no, this is bad. Things just keep getting worse. This time, Judah has another idea. They know that if they leave him in the pit, he will die right? So Judah is suggesting that they should sell Joseph. If they sell Joseph, he would become a slave, right? That means he would have to do hard work for whomever would buy him, right? So Judah is saying, let's not have blood on our hands and kill our own brother. That's not good. Let us sell him. But that's not good either, is it? This is really bad. Let us find out more. And his brothers agreed. Then there passed by Midianites merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Oh no, I can just imagine that Joseph was shouting out in the pit, help, help, help. And these men heard him. And so they drew him out of the pit. But they sold him to the Ishmaelites. So while Joseph's brothers were coming up with another plan, someone else did what they were planning. Oh dear, this is not good. Uh-oh, what will happen now? Let's find out. And Reuben returned onto the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit. Uh-oh. 
and he rent his clothes. And that means he ripped his clothes. And this shows that they're feeling broken. So if they're feeling sad or they're sorry about something, they would rent their clothes. And he turned unto his brethren and said, The child is not in the pit, and I do not know where he is. Uh oh, oh dear. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goat and dipped the coat in the blood. And they brought the coat of many colors to their father and said, This we have found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or not, oh dear. Oh boy, so now they have lost Joseph. They have no idea where Joseph is. And so they decided to do something that was really bad. Instead of telling their dad the truth, they decided to tell a lie. So they put blood on Joseph's coat. Remember, they took his coat before they throw him in the pit, right? So they put blood on the coat and brought it to their father and pretended as if they had found it along the way. Oh, dear. This is not good. Let's listen to what their father said. And Jacob said, it is my son's coat. An evil beast had devoured him. Oh, no. And Jacob rent his clothes and mourned for his son many days. Oh, dear. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Oh. So his family tried to comfort him because he was really sad. Remember, Joseph is his favorite son, but he would not be comforted. That's so sad. So while Jacob is mourning his son, Joseph is taken to Egypt. Do you want to find out what happened next? All right, let's keep reading and find out. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites. So a very important person in Egypt bought Joseph. Wow. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, Potiphar. And Potiphar saw that the Lord was with Joseph, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper. So I can imagine that Joseph was working so hard in Potiphar's house and Potiphar saw all that he was doing was really good because the Lord was with him. Potiphar favored Joseph above all his servants and he made him overseer over his house. Wow. So Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his house and other things. Wow. That's really nice. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him 
overseer in his house, the Lord blessed Potiphar's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. That is really good. Remember the promise that God made to Abraham that whoever bless you, I will bless him. Now we can see that that promise has passed down onto Joseph also because God is blessing Potiphar for Joseph's sake because Potiphar is treating Joseph well, right? Okay, let's keep reading and find out more. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not what he owned, save the bread which he did eat. So because Potiphar trusted Joseph, he didn't worry about all that he had. He just left it in Joseph's care. And so he didn't need to keep track. He was just concerned about what he was given to eat and everything else Joseph took care of. Wow. And Joseph was a goodly person. He did what was right and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that Potiphar's wife liked Joseph and asked him to do something that was bad. Oh, no. But Joseph refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master trusts all that he hath to my care. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph knew that God was with him, and he loved and followed God's commandments. So, if he did something that was bad, God would not be happy, right? And Joseph knew that his master trusted him, and he thought, I could not do such an evil thing. I could not do a bad thing to disappoint my master. And more importantly, I cannot disappoint God for he is with me. All right, let's keep going and find out what Potiphar's wife says. She asked Joseph day by day, but he hearkened not Onto her. So there are times when we will have friends that will ask us to do bad things. And sometimes we will say no at first, but they will keep asking. But let us remember that God is always watching us. And if we love God, then we should do what God says we should do, which is the right thing. We should never do something bad because our friend tells us that it's okay, right? And it came to pass that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was no one else in the house. And she caught him by his garment and asked him again, but he ran away from her and left his garment in her hand. Oh, dear. So, here, Joseph was going about his regular business. And so he went into the house, maybe to clean the floors or to tidy up. And there he met Potiphar's wife. And so she Grab hold of his coat and ask him again to do something bad. But this time he ran away. But he left his garment in her hand. 
Let's find out what happened next. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled that she thought of a lie to tell about Joseph. Oh no, this is not good. Oh boy. And she kept his garment until Potiphar came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he fled and left his garment. Oh, no. So here... Potiphar's wife is telling him a lie about Joseph. Oh no. She is telling her husband that Joseph wanted to hurt her. And so she cried and he ran away, but he left his garment. Oh dear, this is really bad. I wonder what Potiphar is going to do now. Do you think Joseph will say, that's a lie? Do you think Potiphar will believe Joseph or his wife? Let's find out. And it came to pass when Potiphar heard the words of his wife that his wrath was kindled. He was very angry and he took Joseph and put him into prison. Oh dear. Oh no, this is really bad. Now Joseph is going to prison for something that he didn't do. Uh Uh-oh. Have you ever gotten into trouble for something that someone else did? Oh, you know that that does not feel good, right? So Potiphar believed his wife and put Joseph into prison. Let's find out what happened next. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison commit to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. So the keeper of the prison saw that God was with Joseph and that Joseph could be trusted. And so he put Joseph in charge of the prison and all the prisoners. So Joseph was still in prison, but he was in charge again. Wow. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So just like when he was in Potiphar's house, Potiphar didn't have to go check up on him and to make sure that he was doing what he was supposed to do because he was working hard. Well, it's the same when he was in prison. The keeper of the prison trusted him and knew that he would do all the right things. Wow, this is really good. When God is with you, he truly blesses you no matter where you are. Wow, this was a really good story. Have you ever had a bad day? A day when you felt like almost everything was going wrong? Maybe you woke up late and missed the bus to get to school. But then you thought, 
I'll ride my bike today. But when you checked, your bike had a flat tire. You would probably feel frustrated at this point, wouldn't you? But maybe you decided, I'll get some exercise today. I will walk to school. And just when you think things couldn't get worse, it starts to rain. But you didn't have an umbrella. Oh, boy. But wait, because you got wet from walking in the rain, you got sick. Oh, boy. I would consider that a really bad day. This reminds me of Joseph's story. So many bad things were happening. His brothers were jealous of him because he was his dad's favorite child. He got two dreams. And I can imagine how excited he must have felt to share his dreams with his brothers. But when he told them, they were not happy. I can imagine that he was also excited to check on his brothers when they were in the field. But they threw him in a pit. And when he got out of the pit, he was sold far away from home as a slave and was later put in jail, even though he didn't do anything wrong. Can you imagine? Although things were going bad, we see that God was with Joseph and was working things out along the way. And Joseph loved God and followed all his commandments. There will be times when things will seem to go wrong. But let us keep trusting in God that he will make a way. Always pray and ask God to help you and give you the strength to be strong. Just remember, the word of God says, all things work together for good to them that love God. And this means when bad things happen, just know that the Lord will help to make it better for you if you just trust him. Okay? God bless you. Join me next time when we will find out what happened next in the story. Bye! Okay, boys and girls, it's question time. Did you listen carefully to the story? I hope you did. All right, are you ready? Let's begin. First question. What gift did Jacob give to Joseph? Was it a watch? Was it a coat? Or was it a nice bike? Which one? Let's find out. A coat. That was easy. Let's try another question. What did Joseph see in his second dream? Was it a cat? Was it sheaves? Or was it sun, moon, and a star? Think about this question. His second dream. Do you have an answer? Okay, let's find out if you got it right. Sun, 
moon, and a star. I hope you got it right. Next question. Where did Joseph's brothers throw him? Did they throw him in a pit? Or a box? Or in jail? Where did they throw him? Are you ready? Let's check our answer. A pit. Good thinking. Next question. Who bought Joseph in Egypt? Do you remember? Let's see. Was it Potiphar? Was it Pharaoh? Or was it Jacob? So, who bought Joseph in Egypt? Let's see if you got it right. It was Potiphar. Good. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. All right. It's time to have some fun. It's game time. Let's play a game. Now, with this game, you will be given two pictures. So we need to look at both pictures from the story and then say which one comes first. So the question, what comes first? So we have Joseph telling his dream about the sheaves. Second picture, we have Joseph telling his dream about the moon, the sun, and the stars. Which one came first? Figure it out? Let's check. Wow, the sheaves. He had the dream of the sheaves bowing down first. All right, next one. So same question, what comes first? So this is Joseph cleaning Potiphar's house. Next picture. This is Potiphar's wife showing him Joseph's robe. What came first in the story? Let's check. It's Joseph cleaning Potiphar's house. All right, let's keep going. What comes first? Joseph in prison or Joseph in the pit? Hmm, think about it. Which one came first? Let's find out. Joseph in the pit. Good job. All right, next one. What comes first? So we have Jacob giving Joseph his beautiful coat. And next we have Potiphar giving Joseph the keys. He's putting him in charge. What comes first? Are you ready? Keys or coat? The coat. Yes, you got it. Good job. All right, last one. What comes first? Is it Jacob crying when Joseph's brothers showed him Joseph's coat with blood? Or Joseph 
having a dream. What comes first? Let's find out. Joseph having a dream that came first. Wow, I hope you had fun playing this game. Nice playing with you today. All right, don't forget, join us for a song. Bye, see you next time.